In the music ministry, the ministers, and that's what they are, they're not musicians, they're not performing, they're ministering to us. They're helping us in some way. That's why we come together on Sunday so we can edify, lift up, build up, encourage, and empower one another. That's the purpose of coming together in corporate worship and praise. And when they minister unto us, sometimes the Spirit of the Lord just begins to speak. He just begins to speak. First song, ministry. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You're not welcoming here into this physical edifice. We're welcoming him into our hearts. Yes. We're letting him know we are opening up our heart gate for you to come in and rest with us. And then the second song, bless. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come and we go. When you woke up this morning, you have the blessing of the Lord upon you because he gives us new mercies each and every day. He said that. So each day we get a new mercy, which is a new blessing. So you have the use and activity of your limbs. You can see, you can hear, you can speak. You know who you are, you know where you are. That's a blessing. When Pastor was in the hospital, there was a gentleman down the hall from him. He didn't know where he was. And he was having a hard time. And they were having a hard time caring for him because he couldn't understand why he couldn't get up out of the bed and, and, and just go in the kitchen. He thought he was at home in his living room. And every time somebody came in the room, he started yelling, help, help, because he thought someone was breaking in. So Pastor and I prayed for peace for him and peace for the caregivers for him so that they can help him. So it's a blessing each day when we wake up and we know who we are and where we are, and we don't have to have people come and take care of us. Mm -hmm. We can do for ourselves. Yes. That's, a blessing. Yes. Yes. That's a blessing. And then the last song, Good, Good Father. When you think about a father, we all have an ideal in our mind of what we want the perfect father to be like. And since we're in this fleshly body, none of us have perfect fathers. We love our parents. But when we look at them, because they're in this flesh body, just like we are, we weren't perfect children, I'm sure. We probably gave our parents some difficult time. And so our parents, you know, and them being parents and being the authority in our lives, they may have done some things that we didn't feel were perfect. But God is the perfect father. He gives us what we need, when we need it, in the amount we need, and he loves us in spite of ourselves. That's the most important thing, unconditional love from God, our Father. Because some people don't ever feel loved by their parents, but we, we know we love God, and we know he loves us. And he loved us before we even loved him. That's right. So thank you, music ministry, for ministering to our spirits, bringing to our recall, yes, Jesus. by way of the Holy Spirit, who God is in the life of those who say they believe, or those who are seeking and wanting to know what should I do and why should I be. Always know what you believe and why you believe. Amen. 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 Our message this morning, and, and you don't have to stand because the, the, the scriptures are going to be on the, on the slide. And I, I just want to challenge you today to stay in that mindset of being a witness for Christ because Christ is the one whom we say we believe, or Christ is the one that many are seeking, and Christ is the one that many people are wondering, why should I seek? And we've been talking about so many things and understanding the person of Christ and who he is. Not was, but is. Amen. The things that he did and then the things that the Holy Spirit that he sent back to us is teaching us and leading us and guiding us into. And we've been talking about that and saying the best way is just to do what Christ did. <laughs> 
So one Sunday, I gave out these little cards that people want to know who Christ is and how do I get to know him and what does he look like? What are his attributes? What are his characteristics? What's his nature? Why should I desire that? And it's not a card for you to give to them. It's a card to remind you of who you say you are. For those of us who say we are believers in him, and those of us who say we worship him, this is who he is, and this is what he wants us to be. So if you need a card, I, I made some more. I told you I would. But on this card, it just has the fruit of the spirit. There's nine attributes, characteristics that describe who he is. And these nine characteristics, they're not nine separate fruits. What fruit? The nine different flavors, if you will, of how we ought to show forth Christ out in the world. Because everybody doesn't want to hear a sermon. Everybody doesn't want to read a Bible. Everybody's not going to come to a house of worship. Mm -hmm. But if you say you've aligned yourself with him, and that means you want to be like him, that's what Christian means, I want to be like Christ, this is how we do it. So if you need one, there it is. But the message today, word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we do thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be ever glad in it. Father God, on this day, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, and your grace that you've extended to us one more time. Father God, you love us so much that in spite of ourselves, you allow us to keep on living this life that you have so richly blessed us with. So Father God, as we come before you today, open up our eyes and our ears and our hearts to hear and receive what your precious Holy Spirit is speaking to his church. Father God, your word, it will not return to you void. You said that it would go out and accomplish that thing that you set forth for it to do. None of me and all of you is my prayer. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord God, you are my strength. And Lord God, you are my redeemer. Lord God, we love you and we praise you and we honor you on this day for who you are. Just for who you are. Our good father who loves us. The good shepherd who leads us and guides us. And that special, special, precious Holy Spirit that teaches us the way we ought to go. Thank you, my God. Amen. 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 Matthew 28, verse 19 and verse 20. And it's up here on this. Matthew 28, verse 19 and verse 20. 
verses 19 through 20. And I'm reading from the New King James translation. Verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, or look, or hear me, I am with you always, even till the end of the age. Amen. Amen, Amen means let it be so. He said it, he affirmed it, it is so. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Our next passage of scripture comes from the book of Acts, the history book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, then mm -hmm. Romans. Acts is the only history book in the New Testament. Acts tells the history of the ministry of Christ and the birth of the church. So Luke chapter 1, verse 8, from the Amplified. But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. For those who are standing, you may be seen. Being a witness, is it an impossible mission? Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. Is it an impossible mission? Or is it mission impossible? In our previous encounter, the Holy Spirit led us into learning more about being a witness for Christ. We learned that being a witness means that you and I are endorsing. Being a witness means I endorse, I approve of, and I support a person or a thing. We're talking about witnessing for Christ. So when we're witnessing for Christ, that means that we're endorsing, approving, and supporting the person that is Christ. If you were in Wednesday night Bible study, Sister Danielle did a dynamic lesson on Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. But anyway, getting back to our witness, we learned that if we're going to witness for him, we have to support him. We learned that the best way to witness for him and show our support for him is to be like him, to emulate him. Christ was our example. Christ was our example. That's the example that we have to show forth to others when we're out in the world. Everybody in the world is not going to think like you think. Everybody in the world is not going to believe like you believe. Everybody in the world is not going to care like you care. Everybody in the world don't want to know about Christ. Everybody in the world could care less what you believe. And it's unfortunate there are many Christians that don't even really know what they believe. But here at Morningstar, I want you to know what you believe and why you believe it. And the best way to show what you believe is to show forth the fruit of the Spirit. What's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That was Christ embodied. He could not have done what he did if he was not that, if he did not have those attributes. So in order for us to help others come to know Christ instead of beating them over the head with the Bible and bombarding their, their ear gates with our favorite Christian music, or whatever kind of music you like to listen to, and, 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 and walking around with your cross on your neck and weighing you down so heavy you can't even look up to see where you're going. And I'm not talking about nobody. Don't get me wrong. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying to you, the way to bring people to Christ is to be like him. People followed him because they liked the way he lived. They liked what he did. They liked what he stood for. So if we're going to help people understand what being a Christian is all about, it's not about how many people you can drag to church with you on Sunday. This is just for us who come together to worship and to praise collectively and build up and empower. Your church work is we 
when you leave here, Monday through Saturday, every day of the week that you wake up, that's your mission to be like him. So if we're going to draw others in and get them to come and investigate and research and try to find out and seek and find, then we have to give them something to attract their attention. It's just like when you go in the grocery store and you're shopping for fruit. We're compelled to run to the shiniest and the prettiest fruit. But most of the time, that's the fruit that has all the preservatives and stuff on it. They shined up the apples with wax and sprayed the dye of the oranges to make them look more orange and put all kinds of genetically modified stuff in your fruit so it's bigger and fatter and it grows faster. Looks good, but it may not be good for you. And we shun away from the organic fruit that doesn't have any of that. It may not be as pretty, but it's better for you. And that's the same way we want the world to see us as the fruit. We want that pure, untainted characteristic to show forth. We don't want to give the world a superficial idea of what Christianity is. How many people in the course of your life have invited people to come to church and they never came and, or they say stuff like, that's what Christians act like, I don't want to do that. That's what they act like in that church. I ain't going. If they're that judgmental, I'm not coming. If I can't wear what I want to wear, I ain't going. God, I don't care what you got on. He made you. Yeah. Naked, you came into this world. And naked, you're going to return. So he don't care what you look like. What he cares about is what's on the inside. So getting back to being a witness, how are we going to be that witness? We're going to display those characteristics in every display those characteristics every day of our lives in our daily behavior even when it's not reciprocated i have a kind of job where it's never reciprocated most times every now and then somebody will come in and share a piece of the fruit and it's genuine and then you get those that come in and they share a piece of the fruit because they got something that they needed or wanted we don't want to be like that because Christ wasn't like that. He shared in spite of, he gave of himself in spite of how he was treated. And he even said it himself. He said, some of these people are following me because I feed them. And he knew that. But he also knew there was just as many following him that really wanted to follow him. They really wanted to know what he was all about. They really wanted to be like him. They had had enough of what the world was giving. The world had beat them up enough where they said, I need something different. I'm looking for something more. He's not talking like the rest of them are talking. He's not doing what the rest of them are doing. He's something different. He's someone different. He looks different. He sounds different. He acts different. That's what drew people to him. Because he didn't conform. He transformed. So how can we be a witness in a world in which we live today? All the things that we see going on. When we look at those passages of scripture, and especially when we look at Matthew 28, 19, and 20, he's talking to his disciples right before his ascension. His disciples who he's made apostles. But he also had disciples. He had people who were following him that were not apostles. His 12 became apostles, or his 11 became apostles, and then he had some, because they lost Judas, but then he had some people following him that were just disciples, like Mary Magdalene and the centurion and Lazarus, when he raised from the dead. They were disciples, followers, wanting to be like him. All of those who believed. And when we look at Matthew 28, 19 and 20, to them, they must have thought this is an impossible mission. There is no way we can go out into this world and do what he did. How can we? I got the Romans on my back. I got the Sadducees and Pharisees on my back because remember, they were in a land and in a culture and in a place historically where they were oppressed. They were subject to someone else. They were still trying to be their own people. And they were subject to someone else. And not only were they subject to the Romans, they were subject to the religious leaders, their own people. They were subject to the politicians. They were subject to the religious 
sweetest and had their thumb on them, making them do what they wanted them to do. Not giving them the freedom to think for themselves and find their own way and learn about God on their own. And the disciples, Christ just been crucified, okay? Not many days before he was crucified, resurrected. He hasn't yet ascended, so they've been seeing him. Remember, they saw him more than 40 days before he made his ascension. In different places, doing different things. And here comes Jesus and says, I need y'all to go be witnesses to me. I need y'all to go and make disciples of all nations. And they're probably like, but you gone. They're, he's not with them anymore. He's not with them to show them what to do. Because before, Jesus was always showing them what to do. Even after he made them apostles, he was still teaching them and training them and showing them what to do. And now they don't have that. They don't have a model to follow. But Jesus has he's given them all his knowledge and his information. And he's shown them all these things. And they're probably saying, you want us to go to what? It's just like teachers. You pour out, you pour out, and you give your students everything, and then you give them a test, and they look at you like they've never seen it before. <laughs> or when pastor teaches Bible study, and he gives you all this information, and then he asks you a question about the last three slides, and it's dead silence on Zoom. Everybody turn the camera off. No hands go up. He's like, where they at? And that's probably how the disciples felt. No, you don't want us to do this on our own. That's an impossible mission in this day and age. I'm still running from the wounds. If you go up a couple of verses in Matthew 28, before you get to 19 to 20, I believe it's around 17, it said even when he got them all together, some of them still doubted. Here's some people, some men and women walking with Christ every day for three years of his ministry. Three years of their life dedicated to faithful service and still doubt. Is that not like us today? Yes. Something happened and we don't like it. We start doubting. We start questioning. God, I thought I was your favorite. God, I thought I had the inside school. God, why me? I ain't did nothing to nobody. Why me? My family, we faithful. We go to church. We do this. We do everything. We help people. We blah, 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 blah. And we forget God is sovereign. Sovereign means he has the knowledge, ability, and authority to do whatever he wants. Amen. He has the wisdom, skills, knowledge, and authority to do whatever he wants. And they forgot Jesus was the sovereign Lord. And he's given them a commission, a command to go out and do it. And just like now, we as believers, we might feel the same way. It's impossible for me to show forth Christ. In the world we live in, how can I? I'm just one person. I'm trying, but I'm getting tired of being nice and sweet. Don't you ever feel like that? People treat you so badly sometimes, like, why should I? Okay, I'm the only person that's honest enough to admit that sometimes you're like, what? I know Sister Lorraine, though, by the time folks get through hollering at you and carrying on, be like, you know what? Click. <laughs> Done talking to you today. Next, yes, uh huh, amen. They ain't paying for it, nothing. Mm -hmm. We're human people, you're human. Not God already know you're thinking it, yes, okay. <laughs> he already know you're the same, yes, yes, and he already know you're about to do it, mm -hmm. yeah, he knows, but because he loves us, he said, That's okay, because I'm gonna be with you until the very end, yeah. mm -hmm. amen. So, how can we live in a world where superficial and meaningless displays of love, of joy, of peace, of patience, of kindness, of goodness, of faithfulness, of gentleness, and self-control only last long enough for the person that's sharing it to get what they want? or to satisfy their selfish desires and motives. 
Do you ever know somebody to be kind to you until they get everything they want out of you and then they're gone? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a relationship where you thought you was faithful and found out somebody else was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about it. How can we? Is it an impossible mission to be faithful as a witness to Christ and to multiple times? Is it an impossible mission to share the fruit without ulterior motives? Or to share your fruit when nobody else is sharing theirs? Right. Ain't nobody else being nice, but you gotta be. Mm -hmm. Remember going to school? Your parents said, don't let it be you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she didn't care if, 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 if JoJo and Bobo and Buki and all of them was doing whatever. Don't let it be you. You be respectful to the teacher. You mind your manners. Mm -hmm. You listen. You be kind. They hit you, you go tell when you know you want to hit back. Is it an impossible mission? When we see everything that goes on in the world, when you look at all the hate and the division and the dissension and the war and the rumors of and the devastation from natural, natural disaster, the pandemic, political turmoil all over the world. People in general just being lovers of themselves and lovers of what they want. When we live in a world where the food is artificially generated so people can get what they want. And here you are trying to be genuine doing everything right and everybody else doing everything wrong mm -hmm. and we forget to recall we're blessed mm -hmm. yeah. in spite of mm -hmm. what is it the word says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous mm -hmm. if you're going to be like Christ you got to be like your mom you got to pick can't be unstable you got to make up your mind and it's hard. I know it can be hard. I know it can be hard. Because <clears throat> the way of Christ wasn't always popular. The way of Christ wasn't always something that was easy to do, especially back then. But guess what? There's nothing new under the sun. So the same kind of challenges and obstacles that Christians had in the first century church, we have now. The same challenges and obstacles that they had in Acts chapter 2 when that church was established and they were hiding in places to have worship, we still have today. There's still some countries where you better not say God. <laughs> a Bible, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. My neighbor across the street had a son that was doing missionary work in a place in, 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 in communist China where he had to be very careful because if they were caught, they could be shot. Can you imagine? Just call with a Bible, not having church, just carrying a Bible. Could be shot. So what do we do? We have this great commission, and we call it the great commission, an impossible mission. We have that to fulfill. So what do we do? They've given it to them, and they, the Christ has given them this commission, but they still have to learn. He's given them the tools, but they have to learn how to and it's just like us today. We have the tools. He's already given us what we need to do the mission. Amen. We have our word. We can get a Bible in any translation you want. Mm -hmm. As simply as you need it to be to understand. We don't even have to buy a book. There's apps. You can listen to. Yeah. Easily accessible. We have that. And not only that, we have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when he said it's expedient that I should go? When he was telling the disciples he was going to be crucified, he had to go back to heaven. They were like, no, you can't leave us. No, you can't go yet. You can't leave us. What are you talking about? And he's telling them, but if I don't go, your helper can't come. Mm -hmm. And the helper is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So when we get over here to ask, chapter 1, 
verse 8, Luke is talking and he's recalling what was going on. He's recalling this conversation. It's the, one of the last conversations recorded of Christ speaking to his followers in the Bible. And he's recalling what went on and he's saying to them they still needed to learn and they still needed to observe him doing the work and they still needed to watch him fulfill his mission of teaching about the character of God, not just God who is sovereign, but God is their father and teaching them the characteristics of Christ who is now their savior because he's already been killed, crucified and resurrected, saving the world. Can you imagine that? Love? He gave, he gave up his life for folks that didn't even like it. Without question. Willing. They didn't kill him. They didn't murder him. They thought he did. He gave his life. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. thinking so far forward, he said, I'm going to give it for those that are yet to come into this world. Because mm -hmm. they're going to need me too. Mm -hmm. He gave it for us. Yeah. Over 2,000 years ago, he gave his life for us, for all the stuff we know we did wrong. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever did anything wrong? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Ain't oh. nobody else <laughs> being invited oh. to do the, the jump kick out. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you didn't do it, did you think it? Yeah. <laughs> did you watch it happen and not say nothing? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just like doing it. You watch it happen and you don't say nothing. Uh -huh. That was radically wrong. And he did nothing, said nothing. nothing. Kept the fruit to yourself. Mm. But here they are. Now what? Is it an impossible mission? Well, it was, it seemed, an impossible mission given to ordinary. Mm -hmm. I played the song Mission Impossible because Pastor and I, we like to watch the old school version. Mm -hmm. Tom Cruise, I like it, but old school Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. If you've never seen it, go back and watch the original series. Mm -hmm. They were called the Mission Impossible Force. Mm -hmm. They were called the Mission Impossible Force because they would always get a commission. Somebody would record something on a tape record for Mr. Briggs and Mr. Phelps mm -hmm. to play to get the assignment. And they get the assignment, we have to take it back to the team and say, look, this is what we got to do. Seemed impossible. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They always had whatever resources they needed to accomplish the mission. Right. Pastor and I do it all the time. When we watch it, like, where do they get all this money? We're doing all this stuff and building all this stuff and crashing millions and billions and doing all these different things. To accomplish the mission, they have the tools, but they also had the training on how to use the tools. Mm -hmm. They have been empowered to accomplish what seemed to be an impossible mission. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that tape, when they would give Mr. Phelps and Mr. Riggs the, the, the message, they would say, If anybody on your team is caught mm -hmm. or killed, we're going to disavow you. Right. Meaning, we ain't going to know you. We don't want to know nothing about what you just did. Unlike Christ who said, this is your impossible mission, but I want to be with you always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So that's how I know as a believer, the mission is not impossible because he has empowered us and he is with us. He has empowered us with the Holy Spirit. Because remember, he told them, you go back to Galilee and wait for me. Wait for the helper to come. And once the helper comes, you are going to be empowered to do. You're going to be empowered with the ability, the confidence, the skill to do whatever it is I just told you to do. But you got to wait for the empowerment. I taught you. I showed you, I modeled it, I demonstrated it, I wrote it down, I chastised you, I've done everything for you I am going to do. Now the ball is in your court. The bell has sounded, it's time to play. It's time. When the Holy Spirit came 
and, and empowered them. Now it's time to go. No more we're sitting up in the upper room waiting. Go out and fulfill the mission. Was it easy? Of course it was not easy. It wasn't supposed to be. Is Christianity easy? No, it's not supposed to be. Why? Because it's a lifestyle. It's not a movement. It's not a religion. Christianity is a lifestyle. It's a habit, a behavior that you take on that you're going to do every day. It's not just something we do on Sunday or whatever day you go to worship. It's not just that. It's every day of your life. It's a habitual thing that you do. Showing love to people should be a habit by now. Yeah. We the love camp of Tucson. Isn't it what Pastor named that? Yeah. Morning yeah. Star, Baptist Church, the love camp of Tucson. We better not be out there in the world not loving on people. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And you get back to Pastor Stanley, Senior Pastor Stanley, the marriage is Pastor Stanley, that we're out there not loving? Uh-uh. You're going to be down in the hole. No joy. God bless Deacon John. He would sing, I still have joy no matter what. We better not be out there acting like we don't have no joy because we know our joy does not come from the world. Our joy comes from being in the presence of God. Because isn't that what he said? If you're going to believe his word, he says that the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. So we got to have some joy, peace. He already said, I'm leaving you my peace. We talked about that a few weeks ago. He said, I give you my peace. So if we had a peace of Christ, what, what are we anxious about? If we say he's our sovereign Lord, sovereign being, the person that has all authority, wisdom, knowledge, and ability to do whatever he wants for us and in us, what are we anxious for? We have dual citizenship, Christians, here on earth and in heaven. We live in a democracy and a theocracy. Theocracy means God reigns and rules. We render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto God what's God. That comes with our lifestyle change. Now, he knows it's not going to happen overnight. So what did he give us? Patience. Look how patient he was with those disciples. Even up to the point where he was taken to be crucified. Look how patient he was with Peter. Mm -hmm. Here come the guards to get him. What does Peter do? Take out the sword and cut off the alcohol's ear. Jesus probably sat there saying, oh, Peter. I love you, Peter. But that's not how we do it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. yeah. Patience. Yes. And then so much, so much love and joy, he picked up the ear and put it back on Malchus. Amen. Come on now. The person who was coming to arrest him and take him away. Impossible mission? No. That was a question. Is it? Impossible? So here we are. Looking at them being empowered with an endowed, not just empowered, but endowed. Because you can be empowered, and if you don't use what you've been empowered with, then you no longer have power. But when you become endowed, that means you internalize. It. Is that correct? My doctors, teachers. When you become endowed with something, it's yours now. You possess it. And that's what we have to do with the Holy Spirit. We have to possess it and allow it to possess us and rest in us and rule in us and reign in us. Or well, the mission will become impossible for us. But we know that it's not because he's with us every step of the way. He gave them something to look forward to. It's possible, the mission. It's possible, the mission. And you ain't got to go to Africa. You don't have to go to the village in the Amazon. They know. They know of the one God. I've only
only I've researched and I've only found one tribe where people cannot go where they are because they don't want them there. They throw spears at the helicopter when they fly over. They don't want any part of the outside world, but when you look at the pictures that they've taken of those people, they got on regular clothes, you know, the carriage t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. So somebody's been there. <laughs> so they've had opportunity. And he said, he, once everybody has had opportunity, he might decide he want to come back. So we have to be on this mission until he comes back. Now, he gave them a commission. Now listen to me, church. Listen, 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 listen. Commission means an assignment given or a task given to an individual or a group. The Great Commission was given to the disciples, meaning the group. The Great Commission is given to the church as a whole, collective. You don't have to go out there and save the whole world. It's not just you. You have help. He was letting them know you're not alone. Not only are you not alone, you have fellow believers to assist you. Whether they're here or, 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 or somewhere in some other country, they're assisting in the Great Commission because guess what? He gave it to all and he sent them to the uttermost parts of the earth. If you were in Bible study when Pastor did his lesson on the Master's Men, you'll find out where each one of them started their ministries in the different regions of the world. So it's there. People know. So work together as believers. Stop working against each other. People may not approach it the way you approach it, but everybody, if you believe and receive the Holy Spirit in your heart, that song they sang, you're welcome in my heart, this is what you get. You get the fruit of the Spirit. And all of us can show some love to somebody, even if it's just our family. Anybody got family members that need to love on a little bit more? Yes. Joy. Be happy. Go to work and be happy. You have work. You gotta go to work, so be happy while you're there. How long you gotta work? You gotta make the best of it. Yes, People come in all the time and ask me, how's your day going today? It's going beautiful. Really? All day? All day. I'm here from 8 to 5, 8 to 6, 8 to 6 30. It's going good. However long I'm here, good day, joy. You didn't give me my joy. God gives me my joy. Yes. Peace. Can you be a peacemaker? Don't always have your name up in junk. <laughs> you, have, you ever seen people that, you know, stuff jump off and they name pop up and everything and jump off wrong? They name come up. Patience. We can all do that. Can we all extend a little more patience? Just yeah. a little bit more. <laughs> Just that we, we know what we need. I'm not going to read all these again. You know what you need. You know where your strength lies. Christians, stop acting like you don't know where you fit in on this. And where you stop acting like you don't know what you need more of. You know you. Yes. And God knows you. Remember. This is the mirror, remember? Christ said, when you go on stuff and read it, you're looking at me. What part of me don't you have? Or what part of me do you need more of me? Okay. Yes. Yes. You know. Mm -hmm. So is it an impossible mission? Last slide, please. <laughs> no, it's not an impossible mission to be a witness for Christ. You have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to accomplish the mission. Y'all gonna play my song? <laughs> if you can't play it, okay. <laughs> you have been empowered. I ain't trying to be off here. I can see y'all know that, and that's why they got the thing, and I don't. <laughs> you have been empowered to accomplish the mission. If you just have to start off with one thing that you do well, that's part of who Christ is.
do get through it. Do it to the best of your ability. I told the kids when I gave these out the first time, you can do this in school. You can be kind and be good and have some self-control. So yes. nobody has to call your parent on the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or send a note home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or call them to come pick you up early. Because <laughs> you act in a movie I got. <laughs> or even at work when your supervisor say, Do you need some sick time? Would you like the rest of the day? You need mental health care today? <laughs> because sometimes we go to work and we act all crazy because we forget. Yes. Okay. You have been empowered to accomplish the mission of being a witness for Christ. It's mm -hmm. in you. It's part of your DNA. Mm -hmm. Whether you accept it or not, if he's our heavenly father, all of us, and we all got part of him. Yeah. And that was Christ's mission, to let people see God as being human, not just something sitting up on a throne governing the world. He wants to have relationship. He wants to have friendship. And we have kinship with him. He embodied himself in flesh as Christ who came down here and dwelt among men and women so that we could see, they could see what God was really like. And Christ did it for everybody. And everything that's in the Bible, everything he did isn't in me. It's impossible to contain it in the volume of a book. But it's enough for us to say, okay, how do I act like him? Oh, show some love. Show some compassion. Have some patience. Be kind. We can do that. It's not hard. And it is not going to no kind of denomination because I told you Christianity is not a denomination. It is not a religion. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. We go to a church, it says Baptist on the on, 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 on the sign, but we're Christian. Yeah. We're Christian. We're walking in the way. Walking in the truth, mm -hmm. trying to live the abundant life that He gave us. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit says we're done. I love you. Amen. God bless you. Let it saturate your ear gates, your heart gates. Meditate on it and just do it. Just do it. I made more cards so somebody didn't get one when I gave them out the first time. You want some more? Share them with me. People ask you, who's Christ? Give them a here. I mean, I got one here. Why don't I share mine with you? I have mine stuck on my computer mom. Am I going to get fired? I don't know, but I don't worry about stuff like that. It's right here. Bang. To remind me that everybody is trying. Best person they can be. Don't judge anybody for where they are. They are. Yes. Don't judge them. Who, who are we to judge? Anybody. Can't. Not time for that. You'll let us know when it's our time. Yes. But right now, we just have to be like him, follow his example. Yeah. He epitomizes the essence. God. And he sent them out. That's when they truly became apostles. Mm -hmm. Once they were in power, then they could go. Because now they had knowledge, wisdom, ability, skill to use the tools that had already been in them. That's why we need the Holy Spirit every day of our lives. Because it's our leader, it's our guide. He's our teacher. When you get up in the morning, say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being with me today. I'm going to listen to you today. I'm going to follow you today. And if I get out of line, just, you know, remind you, recall. God was always telling his people, Recall me, what I told you. Recall, remind me of who I'm supposed to be, the fruit I'm supposed to be sharing. 
not going to attract people. I heard Sister Janet was saying at the beginning in her prayer, let us be the light. Did he call us lights? Yes. So how are you going to be a light if you want to walk around in darkness? It's a conscious choice. We make every day as we wait to be light. Because it's a lifestyle. Lifestyle it takes a lifetime. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. None of us. You're going to make a mistake. Don't get yourself up and make a mistake. Let's keep going. Okay, God, I can get that with my right hand. I'm going to patient it up. Give me, help me be more patient. He's going to give you an opportunity to do that. Because he's going to say, I know you're ready to help me. Help me. Because the Holy Spirit's like, I'm right here. Just ask me to help you. I'm going he ain't going to kick the door in like Star's getting hurt to say, bam. He wants us to ask him. 